How are you feeling? Feeling good, thank you very much. Great. So, first question, <clears throat> if at any time during the protest and the demonstration, if the City of Ottawa or the Ottawa Police Service provided you, uh, the truckers and the protesters, an order from a court saying that you had to leave or move your trucks out of downtown Ottawa, what would you have done? A court order? <coughs> I would assume we would have left, yes. Yeah. <clears throat> and I understand you've, and we've had discussions and you've had discussions with legal counsel. You understand what invoking the riot act now means, do you not? Approximately, yes. Yeah. And so if a mayor, sheriff, or justice invoked the riot act and ordered that you and the protesters and the trucks left downtown Ottawa, uh, what would you have done? Instructed people to leave. And it's fair to say, as Chief Slawley testified, uh, at no time did any police officer or city official come and tell the protesters that uh, they were illegally parked and illegally unlawfully protesting and had to leave. Is that fair? Not to my knowledge. At that point, my truck was out of the city. I had, I had no equipment here. Okay. So my friend asked you about uh, the memorandum of understanding drafted by a Mr. James Bowder and his Canada Unity Organization. I have a few questions about that. So these Canada Unity folks, uh, to your knowledge, how many of them were in Ottawa? Uh, hard to say. I, I, I honestly don't know. James Bowder was the only one at the time that I knew. There was different people, I think, representing him. Okay. So how many Canada Unity folks did you interact with that you knew were representing him? I believe none. Okay. I believe none. And did you observe... Mr. Bowder or anyone else that may have been with Kennedy Unity uh, to be violent and commit any violent acts? No, sir. Okay. And did you hear of any of these Canada Unity members act in a violent way or try to incite violence? No. Did you hear any of these Canada Unity members state they wanted to overflow the government of Canada by violent means? I never heard anything. And I take it that you asked your lawyers in Ottawa at the time, being Keith Wilson and Eva Chipiak, about this memorandum of understanding from Canada Unity. Is that right? I don't recall having a conversation with them. I believe it might have been a conversation in, in, the, in the group of people together that uh, it had no bearing and it wasn't to be looked at. It was, it was, it was essentially nothing. Do you remember the lawyers describing it as legal nonsense? Yes, I do, yes. Okay. And I also understand, of course, you've uh, had some interactions with Mr. Pat King um, and as well as some of his followers. How many followers did Mr. King have? Uh, I think Pat had a sub some natural uh, following on, on Facebook, I believe. What do I mean physically in Ottawa? Oh, there was a few. Absolutely, there was a few. How would you use a bit of a weasel word? Do you mind if I, uh, you can clarify? What number would you estimate? There is so many people here. Um, so many people with, with every different background. I, I, would, I don't even know if I could guess, Mr. Miller. Okay. And did you observe Pat King or any of his followers carry out any acts of violence? I did not, no. And did you hear Pat King or any of his followers incite protesters in Ottawa to commit acts of violence? No. Did Pat King or any of his followers ever state to you that they're going to physically and violently overthrow the government of Canada? Never, no. And what about this Jeremy McKenzie fella? Uh, did you ever hear of him seeking that protesters act violently or incite people to commit violent acts? No. Did Jeremy McKenzie or any of his followers or veterans that you know of uh, say that they were going to physically and violently overthrow the government of Canada? None. All right. And lastly, of course, Ms. Tamara Leach. How's your relationship with Ms. Leach? Definitely strained over the last uh, however many months it's been with a court order against us contacting each other. So yeah, um, I met her, I spent uh, approximately a month with her, got to know her quite well. She's a genuine, a good person. And, uh, and then I only get to see her now through legal counsel. So someday now, maybe we'll fix that. Now, now I take it, did, uh, how tall is Ms. Leach? Pretty close to midget height. Like yeah. Right. yeah, she's about a midget. And I'm not even going to look at her. But, but she's, I take it, she's still a very scary lady, is she not? 
It's the short ones you really have to worry about. Well, yeah, Napo <laughs> like Napoleon. Absolutely. Absolutely. So she's the, the Napoleon of truckers. Is that fair? Yes. All right. Now, did uh, the Napoleon of truckers, Miss Leach, did she ever say to you that she intended to carry out an act of violence while she was in Ottawa? <laughs> I don't think she'd harm a butterfly. No, she would never say that. Right. And she, I take it she also, uh, you never saw her uh, assault anyone or commit any violent acts? Absolutely not. And I take it uh, she never said to you that she was here in Ottawa to violently take over the government account. Absolutely not. Thank you. Now, my friends asked you uh, some questions about what I would refer to as collusion with some of the other protests that were outside of Ottawa, right? So you had the big ones. You had Coots, Windsor, um, uh, as well as uh, the ones in Manitoba and another one in Surrey. Uh, to your knowledge, did any of the truckers or protesters at all in all of Ottawa, to your knowledge, have any coordination in whatsoever in setting up these other protests outside of Ottawa? No, they were all, uh, as far as I understand, they were all organic uh, movements. Right. And you heard the evidence from Chief Slully and as well as Commissioner uh, Carreric. They speculated that it was possible that the one protest in Windsor was coordinated with Ottawa just based on the geographical distance between the two and the splitting of resources. Do you have any comment on that? I don't agree with that assumption. I, I, I can't see being how organic the movement was. I, honestly, I'd say we weren't smart enough to come up with that idea. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, it's, it's, that's a fine admission. Now, if, uh, uh, Mr. Register, if you wouldn't mind putting up document HRF, zero 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 five two it's the one that canada um for the attorney general put to my uh, client earlier uh, the attorney general today i don't believe i did can we just give you a quick moment to do that and so if uh Madam, mr register if you could scroll down there So there, and just for summary for the folks at home, you have a, a heading with Ottawa weather, inspirational thoughts for the day, a video of Klaus Schwab describing Trudeau's loyalty to the World Economic Forum, a CTV poll on the Emergencies Act, which states that 81% of people disapprove of it, uh, financial supporters uh, scrolling down, Quebec drops mandates, feds scrap pre-arrival PCR tests, British Columbia drops capacity limits, bank run, crypto bank, uh, the picture of uh, my Madam uh, Deputy Prime Minister, another Albertan, and Daily Humor. Yes. Do you see anything invoking violence in that document? I don't know. Do you know of any of the documents that are like that, uh, the daily briefings that asked for violence or sought violence? I can't speak. I, I don't think I read any of them, but I would say no. There, wouldn't have, there was never any talk of it. Okay. 